2020, Google revealed that over 2 million developers had used Flutter since its first release in 2018, which means that it's one of the most popular frameworks out there in the world today. Now, originally, we had Flutter mobile application development for Android and iOS in stable releases, but now we also have Flutter desktop and Flutter web in stable releases, which means that it has just made the framework even more popular. As Flutter developers, one of the most common things that we tend to miss out on is security. Uh, that's because we are more focused on writing code and introducing new features, but we uh, do not always make sure that everything that we have in our application is perfectly secure and robust. Now this can cause an issue when you are putting your application into de deployment after, after everything is done and dusted and you are putting it out for production. Uh, that can leave the application vulnerable to attacks which can cause user data leaks. It can result in uh, your application business logic being exposed or it can even cause your data and or your API keys and your resources being misused uh, which in turn can be very costly especially if you're going out and using something like Firebase or you know AWS. So uh, in this particular video, let's have a look at five such steps which you can take to make sure that your next Flutter application is completely secure and robust. So the first thing that we'll have a look at to make your Flutter applications more secure is code obfuscation. Now what is code obfuscation? It's a very generic term in software. It's actually modifying your app's binary to make it harder for humans to understand. Now when you have a Flutter application or when you have an Android application, it can be reverse engineered uh, in order to generate and expose things like your function, your class names and all the strings inside your application. So uh, since it's exposing so many different details, your API keys, if you have not managed them properly or your business logic, which is mostly revealed by your class and function names can be at risk because of uh, reverse engineering. So code obfuscation actually puts a safeguard against that. Now, uh, before I go ahead and show you how we can do that in Flutter, let's have a quick uh, example. So uh, there are different types of, uh, you know, obfuscations that can occur in your code and even Flutter does quite a lot of them. Uh, but if we have a look at two basic of, uh, you know, basic ways of actually obfuscating your code, that's renaming and string encryption. So, uh, so by renaming, I mean, whatever you know, identity identifiers you have in the application, let's say you have a function name, you have a variables, or you have, uh, you know, the properties of that variables. So all these things can actually be obfuscated into, uh, you know, uh, meaningless symbols. So if I have a, a function like check if user is male, that is changed into A. So looking at this particular function and looking at the string here, it's pretty difficult to understand what this piece of code does. So it means even if someone reverse engineers our code and tries to understand what the application does, he or she won't be able to. Now, uh, if I quickly open VS Code, uh, I have an app ready for you. Uh, so this is the this is a, this is a basic Flutter demo application that comes by default. Uh, and uh, the good thing is I've actually put this in uh, in a complete release stage. Uh, so by that I mean I have signed the application. I have made whatever changes that needs to be done for releasing an Android application. Uh, so the first thing that we'll do is actually running the command called uh, um, Flutter build. Uh, build apk so uh, before we go ahead uh, i'd just like to mention that apk is not the only way you can build it as a app bundle which is preferred by google play store uh, but if you are distributing by process other than google play store then apk might be your only choice uh, so in this case we'll just go ahead with an apk if i say flutter build apk now i'll be using two flags here so the first one is actually office gate uh, and the second one is split debug info so, uh, so what do this, do these flags actually mean? So again, we cannot use obfuscate without split debug info. So obfuscate will go ahead and, uh, you know, obfuscate your code. It will uh, rename all the symbols, the class name, the file name, the strings. Uh, it will do all that uh, for you. And the split debug info, what it does is, is actually it uh, sort of obfuscates your stack trace produced by the application. So whenever you have an application in production, uh, let's say if the application crashes or something goes wrong, then uh, it produces a stack trace of that error that where you can see where exactly in what line, in what function and in what class uh, an error might have occurred. So that particular stack trace uh, is also, you know, sort of uh, modified into human unreadable uh, syntax. Uh, using this particular split debug info and since the split debug info does this 
um, it actually also significantly reduces your app size because a, a section of the app uh, uh, takes care of this stack trace uh, of producing this stack trace. So since it's actually converted to meaningless symbols, uh, the size of your application is also reduced. Now the split debug info will take in uh, an input that is basically where you'll be storing your, uh, you know, the symbol files. Now what are symbol files? Uh, so in, in our case, it will be actually inside build uh, app outputs symbols. Uh, so uh, since you're actually making your uh, stack trace human unreadable and as a developer, you want to know what exactly the errors might be in your application. So this particular folder will store some uh, symbols file, uh, which will be architecture dependent and they can be used to make that uh, symbolic stack trace human readable again. And uh, so if I go ahead and you know, run this particular command, uh, then it shows me that it's building with uh, sound null safety. It just takes a few seconds for this. Uh, in my case, it took 4.8 seconds. And now if I go inside the build folder and if I go inside uh, the app folder, the outputs and the symbols, I have uh, three files generated here, three symbol files generated here. And those symbols file basically uh, represent uh, different architectures. So if you have your phone, which belongs to the ARM64 architecture, then that, that particular symbol file can be used to, uh, you know, deobfuscate stack traces related to uh, that particular ar architecture of an application. Uh, so a pretty good, uh, you know, analysis of this or, you know, a complete explanation of this can be found if you go ahead and type flutter build apk minus h. So here you'll see the two flags we are using, the split debug info and the uh, office gate flag. Uh, so you can read this and there, there is also some additional information like what all methods will not work if you're obfuscating. Uh, so that will be helpful. Now, since we have the symbol files, we need to use them. So for that, we have the command called uh, flutter symbolize. And uh, if I look at the help of flutter symbolize, I have two interesting flags here. The first one is debug info and the second one is input. So the input takes the stack trace file that I am using, uh, which contains the error. And the debug info is actually a part to the symbol files generated by split debug info. So using the flutter symbolize commands, I can actually go ahead and, you know, generate uh, a human readable stack trace, which then I can use to uh, debug my application. Uh, if you're interested in looking at how to actually reverse engineer flutter apps, then you'll find a link down in the description. I'll add it. It's a pretty good article, which explains, you know, step by step about how we can uh, reverse engineer a flutter uh, app and what all things we can see by that. Uh, so uh, let's move on to the next step now. All right. So for the next four steps that we have uh, in this particular uh, tutorial, uh, we'll be looking at a demo uh, in the end uh, and I'll be covering the, uh, you know, I'll be covering the four steps and, you know, describing each of them uh, before we start with the demo. Uh, so the first thing uh, that we'll see now, uh, that is our second step is actually background snapshots. Uh, so when an application is in background, the operating system saves the last state of the application. For example, you can see here that we have the clock app and the uh, calendar app. So corresponding to both of these applications, we have snapshots. Uh, so this is a good feature, but it's quite undesirable, especially if we have some private information lagging here. So a good example that you can recall is uh, Google Pay. So if you go to Google Pay and you start typing in your bank account details, uh, like making a bank transfer to someone, and then you open the app in the background, you see that actually uh, this changes to a white colored screen that is uh, the content of the app, that app is hidden. So uh, this is a good feature if you have, you know, some sensitive information in your application that you do not want to show in the background. Uh, so that, that thing will, we can, you know, go ahead and implement, uh, using a particular plugin that will have a look at, uh, so the next thing that we have usually in connection with this is local authentication. Uh, I said in connection with this, because when you're having, uh, such an implementation in place that you're hiding the snapshot, uh, it's usually desirable that when you reopen the snapshot, you make the user authenticate again locally. Now, 
by local authentication i mean biometric or facial recognition or something similar so if you have a look at uh, the whatsapp uh, system where you can add a fingerprint lock to whatsapp so we can do go ahead and do something pretty similar for our application so that whenever the application returns back uh, to to its state from the background or when it's open for the very first time we are actually authenticating the user locally and making sure that our user is valid so uh, again this is also very useful if you have uh, payment related information or uh, you know some sensitive information like social media uh, the next thing that comes up is uh, secure storage. Uh, so by secure storage, I mean that if you are going ahead and using shared preferences or, uh, you know, SQLite database. Now, uh, the corresponding plugin is called SQFL Lite. Uh, so these are very widely used plugins uh, by developers in Flutter applications. Uh, but the primary issue is that the data here is not encrypted. Uh, so that data can be actually, uh, you know, open in any device uh, which can cause data leaks. Uh, so instead we want to make sure that our data is safely stored and encrypted. So we can use the plugin of Flutter Secure Storage, uh, which actually makes use of uh, keychain and uh, AES encryption uh, uh, for Android. So in, in this way we make sure that the data we are storing locally uh, is also encrypted and uh, it's safe. Uh, so that's one more way in which you could uh, add a, an another security layer for your application. Uh, and the last thing is actually jailbreaking protection. Now, uh, to define the term jailbreaking, that's actually uh, you know uh, a term related more with uh, uh, iOS systems. Uh, jailbreaking refers to uh, rooting the iOS device so that you actually have. Uh, access to uh, you know you actually revoke whatever uh, restrictions was imposed uh, by Apple so that you can install third-party applications or you know do all sort of changes uh, in case of Android that would actually be uh, uh, going into developer mode uh, when you are you know making changes to uh, your Android device as a whole uh, uh, though it can be useful at times it's not always malicious but still uh, whenever such a state is uh, or, or the device has such a state it is possible that uh, some malware has been introduced to the device and it might affect your application or its data so if you want uh, you you uh, ideally can detect such a state of the device and take corresponding actions for example if you have some routes in your application which you want to restrict uh, for jailbroken devices or uh, rooted devices, you can go ahead and restrict those routes. Uh, so these were basically uh, the five steps uh, that we had uh, and the last four steps, uh, the first step we had already seen uh, as a demo. Uh, let's have a look at the last four steps because uh, it's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, so I, I have slightly modified the application here that we had a look at earlier. Uh, but before we go into the app uh, and have a look at the demo, I just quickly let you know what's uh, happening uh, in, in the code. Uh, so we have two files here, uh, the, uh, the main.dart and the home.dart. Uh, so main.dart is going to use uh, two plugins, uh, local auth and uh, secure application. So secure application is actually uh, going to implement uh, the uh, protection of background snapshots and local auth is going to implement the biometric uh, authentication of the device. Uh, so here we have a function uh, by the name local authentication that performs uh, biometric authentication. Now the code is pretty big. I, I wanted to uh, do a live coding session, but uh, uh, since this is more of an informational video, I just uh, let you know what is happening uh, altogether. So um, we, we, we are doing authentication over here and uh, so uh, after the authentication uh, uh, is done, we are notifying if it's a success or a failure and correspondingly, we are actually allowing the user to go into uh, the secure portion of the app uh, that is hidden, which is not visible uh, in the background snapshot. Uh, and uh, that is actually uh, the thing enclosed by secure gate. Uh, now, uh, when we go inside Builder, we have uh, my home page, uh, which loads when the state secured is true. Uh, so that my home page corresponds to home.dart. And inside the home.dart, we have a very simple implementation of storing user credentials, uh, that is username and password uh, using secure storage. 
and also checking if uh, the device is jailbroken or not so uh, if i if i see this now so if i click here uh, i actually have the option to verify uh, my identity via biometric so since it's an emulator i'll just go ahead and you know uh, uh, make use of touch sensor so when i click on this uh, my emulator opens uh, i mean the secure app opens and here we have an option to enter username and password so if i go ahead and quickly you know enter some credentials let's say uh, one two three four as password and i save those credentials so it says save data to secure storage now if i go ahead and click on show user credentials i can see whatever i just saved uh, so i can do this any number of time and uh, the data will actually be encrypted uh, and stored locally uh, so again uh, the new password shows up now the last thing that we have is check for jailbreak now uh, for a uh, emulator device uh, initially this device is actually not in uh, uh, in the developer mode so if i go to my uh, debug console here and i try to check for jailbreak so i get a false message here that says that uh, it's actually uh, not rooted uh, but what we can quickly do is for the purpose of demonstration if i go back uh, open my settings here and i can go to my uh, about emulated device and build number and if I click here uh, a few number of times, I can get into the developer mode. Uh, so basically my device is now, uh, it says I am a developer now, so it's it's in rooted stage. So what I can do is if I quickly go back to the application and uh, you know, I authenticate again, of course. Uh, so in that particular case, if I click on, uh, if I click on check for jailbreak, so you see that we are getting a true message now. Uh, so basically check for jailbreak is working and if you want to restrict something you can go ahead and do that uh, the last thing to have a note is um, the background snapshot so you see if I go away from the application the snapshot saved is actually uh, not showing anything or in other words any information or uh, in our case the password or username details that we are filling is actually hidden from the view uh, uh, when in background so uh, uh, this is a pretty good example of uh, how you can make your app secure uh, i'll be adding the link to the github repository in the description again uh, where you'll have the complete code for the application you can have a look at so those were the five steps that can make your application more secure and robust now one cannot guarantee that your application will always be foolproof against any kind of attacks but uh, i'm sure uh, adding those five uh, steps would definitely uh, increase your chances against attackers that would be the content for this particular video uh, i hope you found it useful and informative uh, make sure to like and subscribe uh, and i'll see you in the next video